Hello, in this lesson we will add a global game state storage mechanism to our game. This will allow us to add an option to the start screen for the player to choose single or two player mode, which we implemented in the previous lesson. Also, we will add an end screen, which will show the tally of wins and losses for the X and O players. And again, this is made possible by that global game state storage mechanism. Let's first complete the single player mode feature by allowing the player or players to choose between single or two player mode when the game starts. So in the existing start scene, we will split the start game button into a start single player game button and start two player game button. So in the start game scene, start by adding an HBox container. This will auto lay out the buttons side by side. Move the existing start button into this new container and add a new button and rename both buttons accordingly. So on the HBox, set the alignment to center and add some separation of 20 between the buttons. And then finally change the labels on the buttons. Now in the start game script, we will refactor to accommodate the presence of both start buttons. First, we fix the variable declarations at the top of the page. Now, update the ready function. And finally, address that now we have two on start functions. So we'll add a second and refactor. As it stands now, both buttons will start the game in the same way. But now we have two paths, allowing us to alter logic between which path is taken. So at this point, we need a way to store the choice of single versus two player mode made at the start scene, so then it could be referenced in other scenes and code. So as we did in a previous lesson with the scene changer class, we can use Godot's autoload construct for this. With the class specified as an autoload, it runs in a sort of protected global space, making it available to code in any currently running scene in the game. So let's create a game state class and specify it as an autoload. This will hold the player mode value plus any additional global state values we may need. So create a game state script in the globals directory and call it game state. Again, I add my auto loads to a directory called globals just out of convention to keep track of them, but it's not required. So looking at the code, we use Godot's set get mechanism to create the property of game mode on this game state class. Additionally, we use an enum to limit the values accepted at the setter for that of single player or two player. Now with this code in place, signify this class as an auto load by going to project, project settings, auto loads, and then specify the path to this class and click add. So now in any running scene, we can use the game state class to set and get game mode values. So let's do just that in the start game code. We can set the game mode based on which start game button was clicked by returning to those two onClick methods we just created. And now returning to the tabletop scene, we can stop commenting and uncommenting the creation of the computer opponent and instead base its creation on the value of game mode. Now, if we play the game, the game mode will change based on the mode you chose at the start scene. Now with the game mode selection complete, let's go ahead and add a quit game button on the start screen. We'll add the quit button below the start button. First add an H box to the existing V box. This will allow us to center the button. Next add a button within that and call it quit game and give it the label quit game. Next turn off in the size flags, the horizontal scaling so that it no longer expands to the entire container. And then finally, set the HBox alignment to center. Now in the start game script, we'll wire up this new quit button. First, designate it as an on ready var at the top of the file. Then connect to a local function in the ready function. And then finally, create that local on click function and simply call Godot's provided quit function. Now for a quick test, simply just start the game, and then on the start screen, just click quit, and the windows should simply close. 
Now let's look at leveraging our game state storage mechanism in another way. We'd like to allow the player to play multiple rounds and see a summary of their wins and losses at the end of each round. For this, we'll need a new scene, uh, sort of an end summary scene, to display this tally. So go to Scene, New Scene, and choose User Interface as the starter template. Rename the control to Progress Summary, as we did with the start scene, add a margin container for padding, and go ahead and rename that to padding. For layout, select full rect, and then using the theme overrides, let's give it a margin of 50 all around. As for the layout of the screen, let's design a very simple wireframe to get us oriented. This calls out the data elements that we'll need to store and retrieve for this scene, that of the last winner, and then the tallies for X and O. So we'll get to storing and retrieving those soon, but first let's start with the layout elements of this scene. Start with a VBox container to give us that vertical layout for all our elements on the screen, and let's shorten the name to VBox. Within the VBox container, we'll add the labels specified in the outline, setting their alignment to center and giving them placeholder tech. For the play again label at the end with the buttons, They'll f let's first add an HBox container, and then in that container, place the label and the two buttons, giving them the proper text. And then finally, select for that HBox container the alignment of center. As with the game start screen, we'll not be worried about the look and feel at this point, just the functionality. We'll address the overall look and feel in the next couple of lessons. That being said, we have all the elements we need for this screen. Now let's incorporate the scene into our game flow. In the tabletop code, let's change the path of round complete scene path to that path of this scene versus going directly to the start scene. Now for a quick play test, we simply play the game and on the end of a round, you'll notice you're sent to the summary scene instead of the start scene. So now we need to implement the functionality of the summary scene add a script to the top control node, and first add references to the play again buttons and paths to the scenes we will navigate to from this scene. Now implement the ready function where we'll map local on click functions to these buttons. Then finally add the on click function which sends us to the appropriate scenes. Now we have our game round summary screen. We need to populate the dynamic values within it Let's start by keeping track of the winner of a given round. First, we'll add a last winner property to the game state class, just as we did with the game mode by using, utilizing Godot's get set keyword to add this property. Now we need to record the round winner at the appropriate location. We can set the last winner in the tabletop class in the is finishing result function. In the case there is a victor, we call game state dot last winner and set the value of the victor. Now to finish up, we just need to output this value to the summary screen. So first add a reference to the congrats label. And then this is not the only value we'll be setting here. So we'll define a set labels or sorry, a set values function and call it in the ready function. And then you can see within that set values function, we set its text property incorporating the last winner value red from the game state or tie if there was no last winner. And then for another quick gameplay test, if we play through having X win, we can see the on the round summary screen that there is a congratulations statement for X. And then if we play another round and this time we have O win, we see the expected congrats for O this time. Now onto the remaining values to display on the summary screen, the win tallies for X and O. In the game state class, we first add a property for the X wins and the O wins. And then since we're already recording the last winner, we can refactor set last winner to increment these win tallies. And finally, we add a getter for the win tallies in the form of the function get win tally. 
This takes a parameter signifying which total is wanted, and then the correct value is returned. So now we can output these values to the summary screen in a similar manner as we did for the congrats message. First map the label elements with onReady variables, and then create the appropriate label text in the setValues function. Now let's game test. Go through a round and see the tally appear on the summary page. Then go through one more round and see that tally increase. Now select no for another round to take you back to the start game screen. Play through a quick round and but we'll discover an issue on the summary screen. The old tally still exists, we've just added to it. This shows one way global state can be a double-edged sword. Our game state class, marked as an autoload, is doing what we asked it to do. It's storing values globally in a durable manner, impervious to scenes being loaded and unloaded. But in this case, we need a method to reset the state if the current player chooses to not continue with another round of the game. We can accomplish this by defining a reset function on the game state class. And this simply resets all the property values for game state. Now in start game, we can utilize this reset functionality on the on clicks for either start game button, be that single player or two player, we now just call this reset method. And we're now assured that the start of a new round of a game has the game state zeroed out. So now in our game, we have a place to store state between rounds of tic-tac-toe. It's a simple mechanism, but it's really all we need for this game. We now have a game round summary screen, which shows some of these stored values at the end of a given round. And at this point, we really have all we need for our functionality for our game. In these final three lessons, we'll be adding visual polish, uh, visual effects, and sound effects and music, which will be everything we need to complete our tic-tac-toe game. Thanks again for watching. Comment below if you have questions. Uh, likes are always appreciated. Comment and bell so you don't miss any future episodes.